Few of us would argue that our education is an investment in our future. But what about our investments and finances during college? What about preparing for our financial future after college? Hi, I'm Rodolfo Mendoza Denton. I'm a psychology professor at UC Berkeley and your co-host for today. Joining me is Dri Cavusi, ASUC senator and fourth year undergraduate. To talk about financial literacy, we have three guests for you today. First, Claudia Montesano, financial wellness and outreach manager in the Financial Aid and Scholarships Office at UC Berkeley. Sylvia Marquez, Associate Director of Financial Aid and Scholarships at UC Berkeley. And finally, Jamie Stahl, an undergraduate peer mentor at UC Berkeley. Welcome and thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's dive right into the topic of financial wellness. Absolutely. Claudia, why is finances categorized with wellness? What is financial wellness? Well, financial wellness is a pretty broad topic, um, but it is I think really important for the overall wellness of the student because um, finances can be really stressful for students. So it goes along with um, the total wellness and managing your stress level if you have all of your finances under control. So that is really one of the major stressors for undergraduate students. Um, so we just really define wellness as being on top of your finances, really understand what's happening and being able to plan for the future and really graduating um, from UC Berkeley in um, a good position to you know, make yourself successful for the future. How did y'all get interested in student finances and this topic? So we all work for the financial aid office and so it's key, two thirds of our undergraduates um, receive some form of financial aid and so we're, we're a student serving office and so we're student facing and so we're often seeing students that have questions about finances and budgeting um, and I think nationally it's become a much larger issue um, for students and, and how to, how, needing the skills and building those skills for how to budget and finance. And yeah, um, so I was hired on to create a peer mentor financial literacy program called Bears for Financial Success. Um, so that's what I've been working on um, in my position and Jamie is actually one of our peer mentors for that program. So maybe you can talk a little bit about why it was interesting for you to apply for the position. Great, so I applied actually over the summer before I even started attending Cal. And it really spoke to me because in high school I had my own job, but you know, I kind of spent the money on whatever was there, whatever I felt like doing. And I knew that in college I was gonna have to prepare to pay for books or supplies or, you know, food if uh, my parents weren't supplying that for me anymore. So. I really wanted to be able to learn to manage my own finances, but also as a peer mentor, I can help others learn the same things. And so I really enjoy working with other students and I felt like the best way would be to be a peer mentor. Um, and I think that it's really important for students to have kind of that peer-to-peer -peer contact as well. So especially with something that's a, such a sensitive topic. Yeah, what, what are some common issues that students at Cal face with their finances? Um, a lot of students come to us with loan questions. Um, we have different um, modules and presentations that we present periodically or to different groups. And some of them include credit, credit cards, loans, budgeting. You're a peer mentor in Bears for Financial Success, yes. is that right? Yes. What are the services that you offer? So we currently have presentations that we can go and talk to different groups of students about. So we discuss um, topics such as loans, budgeting, um, identity theft, credit, et cetera. But we also have one-on-one -on -one consultations. So a student can either sign up online or be referred to us through Cal Student Central and even if, um, through financial aid. And they can come to us and talk about you know, any topics that they, they really feel strongly about. So if they're having trouble managing their finances, they're interested in taking out loans, but they're not sure how, we can direct them to the right resources and kind of walk them through, um, you know, like a schedule or some type of um, information that will really help them. Bears for financial success, yes. I like it. Basically, when we um, created the program, we talked to a bunch of other universities and talked to some students to see what the main issues were and what they really needed to know. Um, and so that's how we based our, our topics that we cover typically. And I think you covered pretty much all of them, savings yeah. and banking we go over, as well as identity theft. So. Um, 
Can I ask a follow-up question? Yeah. You said that you, uh, you surveyed and asked a lot of questions about the topics that regularly come up, the issues that, uh, that are salient for students around financial uh, wellness. What are those topics? You mentioned, of course, a couple. Are there others? Yeah, so, um, so I guess I'll just list them. It's basically kind of the baseline is budgeting, creating a spending plan, um, understanding credit and why that's um, important for students in their future, understanding credit cards, um, debt and student loans, um, what else, savings and banking, and, and identity theft. And some, some people really um, also talk about taxes. That's not one th thing that we do in our program, but um, that is something that other universities and other you know, students want to know about as well. That's excellent. So what resources are available if I'm a student seeking y'all's guidance? So I think one of the things when we brought on Claudia and, and started the um, literacy program, we did a lot of research uh, just on our campus about what resources were out there. And what we found is that there were pockets of resources on campus, whether that was a class, a decal class, or a class taught by a professor, or student groups doing different things. And so we ended up pulling all of that together, um, or, or trying to sort of be a repository for that information. And I think Claudia can speak more to the actual resources that um, we partner with and use on our campus. Yeah, so our program, the Bears for Financial Success, right now we have workshops for students um, based on those topics. And then we uh, will have other, other services in the future. But there's also a student group called the Student Financial Advisory Committee, and they also hold workshops on financial literacy topics. Um, and then there's the Berkeley VITA program, the volunteer income tax assistance program, and they are based on campus students that are trained to help other students fill out their taxes. Um, and there's also you know, other peer-to-peer -peer groups that are um, helpful with students in, in interpreting their financial aid. Um, the Berkeley, what's the advi advocate, the student advocates office does a lot with um, literacy and helping students understand mm -hmm. their financial aid and their financial um, plan as well. And those are different programs than the peer mentorship. Yes. Program. Okay. But but if but correct me if I'm mistaken. But these programs are specifically for uh, counseling and for orienting, as opposed to financial advice per se. Am I correct about that? That's correct. Yeah. We we are not financial experts. We're not financial advisors. But we um, are here to give students the tools and the resources to manage their finances um, and to, to sort of develop those skills to make them successful. Right. So it's kind of a, a learning a learning environment where you you the workshops and the tools that are given are not meant as financial advice of the kind that you might get at a uh, at a private institution, uh, but rather uh, but rather learning kind of uh, situations right, for correct. the students. That's good to know. Let me try to summarize a little bit of what was said, and I'll ask you to repeat a few of the names of the institutions. I couldn't catch them all. Sure. Bears for Financial Success, that's yes. the program, that's the peer mentor program that you're uh, yes. participating in. How large is that, Jamie? Uh, there's currently seven peer, peer mentors. Thank you. You mentioned uh, VITA Committee, which helps with the taxes. Yes, VITA, um, Volunteer Vita. Okay. Income Tax Assistance. Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. And then the name I absolutely didn't catch, <laughs> Student Financial... Advisory Committee. Okay. Yes. Um, and what do they do? And they also provide workshops for um, students based on financial literacy topics. They cover things like budgeting, credit, and I think they do taxes as well. And then finally, I think you mentioned the uh, student advocates advo office. Right. And what do they do, the students? So they do um, advocacy work on behalf of students. So if students are having um, issues navigating uh, different issues like financial aid, registration, mm -hmm. um, registration blocks, those sorts of things, they can go to the student advocates office and, and there are students trained to help them um, navigate those those issues and they have contacts and we partner with them closely. You know one of the things that's true about Berkeley is exactly the experience that you uh, that you just mentioned Sylvia which is that uh, there are many pockets of information mm -hmm. or resources that mm -hmm. are present on campus but don't necessarily talk to each other. Correct. That can be very confusing for students and what's sure. nice about your office is that at least students know that if they come to your office you will have 
uh, contact or knowledge about these other resources that may be on campus. And that's the whole point of this, uh, of this seminar, to expose students to the kinds of resources, or at least the first place to go knocking if you have questions on these, on these issues. Yeah. Let's talk about, with, uh, let's talk about uh, getting started with finance. Um, so let's say I'm a student new to Cal, where do I go? Do I go to y'all's office or I go to you know, the peer mentor? Who, who do I talk to first? Well, I think the best place to start really would be our website. So we have um, all of the information that we go over in all of our workshop is up on the website to sort of guide you in the different topics. Right. I think the first step for all students should be to create a spending plan. So, um, you know, looking at what all of their income is, their financial aid, and then sort of looking at all of their expenses and what their anticipated expenses are. So that our website walks them through all of that. Um, and we do have you know, a space on our website right now to request a presentation. And eventually we will have our one-on-one -on -one consultations as well with our peer mentors. So with a budgeting plan, mm -hmm. I, I hear that often and often students are, wonder, mm -hmm. you know, I have so much to pay for with school and books and food, but I'm also supposed to be saving for my future. How much mm -hmm. do you recommend students put aside each month um, just to plan in advance? So I guess um, it really depends, um, but I think that that is sort of the illusion that there is nothing for me to spend. You could just say, okay, one time a week I'm going to forego my uh, going out to lunch and make my lunch instead, so maybe that's $10 that I could put aside every week or something like that. So it really depends on, you know, if there really is no room, you can at least do maybe a couple dollars here, a couple dollars there, so that it's um, developing that habit for students. And so when they have a lot of extra income, hopefully someday, that they'll have that habit and, and put things away. So it's not so much about the, the amount as, about, as it is about the habit? Learning the skill, and, and for a lot of our students, um, who apply for financial aid, this is the first time that they might have a, a relatively large amount of money that they need to budget. And so I think it's important mm -hmm. that we start at the website or come in to Cal Student Central and start asking questions about how much am I getting in a refund? What do I do with it? Um, and, and that's certainly one of the ways that they can get turned on to Bears for Financial Success um, or some of the other tools that we have online that can help them start to budget so that they're learning those habits from the moment they step foot um, and, and develop those skills so they're ready when they graduate from Berkeley. So come to Cal, let's say I'm on financial aid, do I come to y'all's office or would the website walk me through? If you have financial aid questions, then definitely start at Cal Student Central and they can help you sort of navigate what you have and what that means. And then if you have anything further in terms of just managing that money, then it would be where you would go towards um, Bears for Financial Success. And there are financial aid counselors as well um, from CSC. If, if there isn't enough information at CSC, you can have our students certainly be referred to a financial aid counselor who can help walk them through the process of the financial aid process through billing and payments so that they understand how their aid is going to be applied and what they can expect back if there's a refund coming. And what is CSC? That stands for Cal Student Central. Oh, that's yeah. what you were yeah, saying. Yeah, Cal okay, Student okay. Central. Okay. And, <laughs> and that's a physical space on campus? <laughs> yes, yes. Where is that? It's actually beneath the Office for Financial Aid in Sproul Hall. In so, Sproul Hall. It's in 120 Sproul Hall. 120 Sproul Hall. And mm -hmm. the reason we ask is that students are often coming in uh, with this very large campus in front of them, mm -hmm. not knowing exactly where to go. So 120 Sproul Hall. Seems. Right. So Cal yes. Student Central is sort of the one stop for students mm -hmm. if they have questions about financial aid, registration, uh, billing and payments, they should start there. You were mentioning the website a couple of times, mm -hmm. and so uh, if, I were, uh, if I were on a search engine, I would simply type financial aid UC Berkeley? So it's financialaid.berkeley.edu. Okay. Um, and there are several menus at the top, one of them being um, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So if you click on that, you'll find information on Bears for Financial Success. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So on the website, under the financial literacy, so there's mm -hmm. financial aid, financial literacy, what's, what's the difference? That's a good question because I think a lot of our students get really confused. They'll come to one of our workshops thinking we're gonna to talk to them about financial aid, mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily what we do. Financial mm -hmm. aid is definitely a part of your finances, but financial aid, 
those are that's the resource to help you pay for school. So that's really where, if you're getting financial aid, that's going to be most of your income. Um, but financial literacy, what that is, and managing your finances, it's just talking about what do I do with that money once I have it? Where does it go? Where's my inflow? What's my outflow? Um, and just sort of understanding how to manage your money is different than the actual financial aid, which is basically just the resource. And work study is in is that under financial aid? It is. Can you elaborate yes. upon what work study is? Uh, so I'm actually a work study student as a peer mentor, and so work study is something that's offered as a financial aid pack in a, your financial aid package. And basically, you can work on campus, and that money goes to you to help you pay for your school expenses or um, groceries, anything that has to do with that. If you're a lower income student or there's also options um, if it's available to you to convert loans to work study so that instead of taking out loans, if you're unsure about whether you want to do that or if that's something you definitely don't want to do, then you can convert it to work study and um, work 10 to 15 hours per week uh, on campus uh, to help like facilitate and um, pay for your schooling. That's awesome. yeah. I think to maybe back up a little bit, there's an mm -hmm. expectation that all students will contribute toward their educational expenses while they're at Berkeley, and that may be in the form of work mm -hmm. study, it may be in the form of loan if they need to borrow, um, or outside scholarships. So there is that expectation, and work study is one of the ways that they can contribute toward their own expenses. Let me follow up on that question, mm -hmm. uh, Sylvia. Where do students go for information about potential scholarships? Um, so there are a ton of search engines out there. Um, for UC Berkeley scholarships, all students have to do is file either a FAFSA or a DREAM Act application, and we'll consider them for any institutional scholarships that we have. Um, but for outside scholarships on our website, we have a search, we have a page that has several search engines on our website. Um, and you know, I, I often joke about this when I'm meeting with new students and families, but I really do think that students need to make it sort of their part-time job to start researching those outside scholarships because it's one of the ways that many of our students keep their loan debt down and also their work hours because their job is to be here as a student and complete their degree. Um, and our students bring in over $10 million in outside scholarship each year. So. That's interesting to know. So mm -hmm. just to summarize a few of the things, the key points that we've been talking about, there's Cal Student Central in 120 Sproul Correct. Hall as, a, as the, I guess, the, the first one-stop shop even before your uh, your office. Um, uh, there's a difference between financial aid, which is the, uh, the actual grants and monies that allow you to finance your education, and then financial literacy, which is managing those funds, the inflow and the outflow. What's the difference between literacy and financial wellness? Well, literacy is really focusing on the understanding of how, you know, being competent in all of the areas, so I know how to make a budget, I know how to um, check my credit, I know what credit is, all of that. Mm. Wellness is really sort of putting that all into practice so mm -hmm. that you're, you really are on top of things and everything is sort of manageable and you're um, not stressed out about money, basically. Right, right. And you mentioned, of course, the financial, uh, the financial aid website. Uh, as well as the uh, availability of financial counselors to take you through every step of the way. Remind us of that website? It's financialaid.berkeley.edu. Great. Um, I want to, if, if you don't mind, shift mm -hmm. focus to uh, Jamie and your role as a peer mentor for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you mentioned you applied this summer, so how did you even know that that was the specific work study or work that you wanted to be doing? Uh, that I was going to be doing, it was, I was looking on the website, on the work study website, because I had seen that my financial aid included it. So I went on the website and I was kind of browsing through the list. They have a list with different job descriptions and what you would be doing, all the different information you need, how much it pays, et cetera. And I came across the financial literacy option and I don't know, it just kind of really stood out to me because I knew that finances um, were a really big resource for me. I really. Um, wanted to be able to pay attention and know what I was talking about and know what I was doing with my own finances. And so I knew that if I was having trouble with it, even having a job in high school and having to pay for a lot of my own um, things during high school, I knew that other students were definitely going to be, you know, confused or uncertain about their own finances. And so 
I thought that it would be a really great way to get the word out there and to help students on my own and kind of do my own part with the financial wellness and financial literacy. So what does an average, I liked what you said earlier about, you know, peers helping peers. It's almost mm -hmm. like tutoring, right, yeah. the peer mentor. Mm -hmm. And it really does make a difference when it's another student telling Absolutely. you things. It's less condescending, it's less scary. So what does your average meeting with a student look like? You said there's only seven of seven peer mentors? Yes. Uh, we haven't actually started our one-on-one -on -one co consultations just yet. Mm -hmm. We've um, currently been training for it. But with the presentations, there's generally 15 or so students and um, most of the time we the peer mentors we tackle it t with two of us um, and so it's kind of us and we have a PowerPoint and we do some activities with the students to help with um, kind of in reinforce the ideas that we're trying to put across so if we're working on budgeting we'll do kind of a budgeting activity that goes through how to create a spending plan and then afterwards or even during students will often ask questions just to clarify. So if I'm a student trying to go to one of these yeah. workshops or trainings, do I sign up online? Do I come to the office? How do I, how do I even hear about this? Uh, most of the time we, have, we do it with specific groups. So we kind of partner with them. A group will request a presentation, which as Claudia mentioned, there's an option on the website to request a presentation. Um, but other times students will hear it through their residence halls if they're a freshman, through emails. Most of the time, like I said, it is through other groups that we've kind of outreached towards or they've reached out to us. And is it impacted? Like, would I, if I wanted to schedule a meeting with y'all, would that take a while to get a meeting? Um, I think Claudia could probably answer that better. She's the one who kind of organizes <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, so in terms of scheduling our workshops, it's usually we can schedule within a week or two, depending on the availability. So, I mean, we have seven peer mentors, so that sort of gives us some flexibility. Usually there's somebody available, um, except Monday nights some team seem to be really <laughs> difficult for us. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's typically a pretty quick turnaround, and you can you know, ask us a week before, some people ask us a month before, um, and there are like specific people that we've been partnering with that mm -hmm. have a program that they want to schedule it out throughout the semester and do maybe a series of three workshops, things like that. So it works in different ways. So you have different topics for each workshop. What is like the general catch-all? I just want to have a crash course in finances mm -hmm. workshop. Do you have one of those? We usually start with the spending plan, okay. and that's based because that's the most basic thing that you're going to need to know before you manage anything else. Is how do I just manage my income and my expenses? So that's usually what we start with. Yeah, um, I think it's uh, wonderful to hear that you interface with various student organizations, mm -hmm. and I'll just remind our viewers that we have several modules mm -hmm. on community building, on student governance, so that if students become involved in any kind of student organization, they can turn to you so that they can then offer your services to their constituencies. Well, That's absolutely. really good to know. One mm -hmm. final clarification. We talked about peer mentors, but we also yes. talked about uh, financial counselors. What's the difference? So financial aid counselors are professional staff mm -hmm. here on campus that can help students and families navigate the entire aid process. Um, and then we have our peers. I don't know if you want to talk more about the peers. Yes, so I think that um, the financial aid counselors are really to um, talk about their financial aid, and then we're here to sort of talk about, you know, managing that financial aid, managing their money. But And, and our peers are all work-study students. Right. I see, Correct. I see. Mm -hmm. So since we're talking about students, um, we would like to devote a few minutes to asking questions from the perspective of students, uh, questions that, uh, that we have heard students ask about finance and literacy. Um, and if you, if you don't mind, we would like to pose those questions in the role of students. Sure, sure. Um, so yeah, one, one of the big questions I know a lot of students ask is, you know, I'm taking out so much money, I'm gonna be in so much debt to finance my education, is this, Am I ever going to be able to pay off my loans, get out of this debt? So I think it's really important that students understand from the beginning and, and that this information get out there is six, over 60% of our students graduate from Berkeley with no debt at all. Um, awesome. And we're much lower than the national average. Our, our average debt is about $17,000 by the time students are done with their degree. So 
if our students are, are in a position where they're taking on a lot of debt, I think we need to start at a very basic question, and, and the question is why. What are the underlying symptoms, I think? that Those are the questions that I think we need to ask, and I think um, some of the resources we've talked about are places that students could go to um, learn maybe some of those basics about managing a budget. Do you need to take out loans? How do you create a spending plan? Are there other ways that you can meet your expenses, like work, like outside scholarships, so that you don't have to borrow? That's that's excellent to know, especially because with the budgeting, I, that sounds like a big, a big hot button yeah. uh, topic for a lot of students. Mm -hmm. um, another question I hear a lot, and I, I myself, <laughs> you know, I if you have loans and you wanted to go to med school or something like that, you know, that's even more loans, and how do you pay it all off? So. Is it smarter for students at this day and age to, you know, just choose a career where they're going to make a ton of money to pay off these loans right away? Um, so I don't think that I would let loan debt dictate what you do. Okay. I think that it's really important, like Sylvia said, to start planning from the very beginning and say, okay, how much debt do I really need to pay off? So if you're planning on going into something that's, you know, a career that's maybe not going to you know, be a huge salary. Keep that in mind from the beginning when usually we recommend as a rule of thumb to um, not borrow more than your first uh, year that your, your starting salary of your first year once you graduate. Um, and there are a lot of tools and they link from our website that are the sort of a debt repayment calculator that you can estimate, you know, you can put in what you've already borrowed and you can forecast for the future to see what those payments are going to look like. So you want to just make sure that those payments are going to be manageable um, and just kind of keeping it under control, making it a, making a spending plan and only borrowing what you need. So I definitely don't think that it should dictate um, what you're doing, but really it should be a conversation up front to know this is really how much I need to borrow. Let's be realistic about what I'm going to be borrowing. So you mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, a calculation in there of not more than the first year of what you would make in a given career. What about students who have no idea what they want to do or no idea how much their potential career could uh, garner? You know, I think it goes back again to taking that first step to um, develop those basic skills about a spending plan, especially if you don't know what you want to do and are there other ways that you can um, finance your expenses rather than loans or borrowing, again, only what you need versus what you might be offered. And so I think if you're learning those skills from the beginning, you can make a, a more informed decision as you go through the process. So just to underscore the point, even if you don't have the future planned out mm -hmm. entirely, the, the, the getting of the skills is important in and of itself Correct. for those later moments. Correct. Thanks. What about students who are supporting their families? Are there resources available for those individuals? So we do have a population of student parents on our campus. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a student parent center on our campus that we partner with very closely, the financial aid office. Um, we have a few counselors that um, visit the, the student parent center weekly. Um, and so we're meeting with students one-on-one -on -one in the Student Parent Center as opposed to having them come to the financial aid office. Um, we're also partnering very closely with the um, Parent Umbrella Program, which is the Centers for Equity, er, Education, Equity, and Excellence, um, CE3. Mm -hmm. um, and they house seven different programs of which student parents are one. And so um, we, we do provide the one-on-one -on -one, um, financial aid advising for that group of students. and. Um, there's also, um, I think that's, I'll leave it at that, yeah. Right, so just to underscore that point, CE3 mm -hmm. is, um, is a center that we talk about in the Coping with Guilt segment of this seminar. Um, I know we've touched upon how a lot of it is about budgeting and you know really getting your footing, but for students that are financially impacted, what are some specific tips for handling finances that are specific to college? Um, well, okay, so let's see. The first thing, you know, we talked about budgeting, yeah. and I think I've said this a million times, but yeah. I'm going to just reiterate, <laughs> yeah. knowing what your income is and then knowing what your expenses are, mm -hmm. um, understanding your financial aid if you have it, understanding credit I think is also really important because um, it really can impact your future and your financial health moving forward. So the things that you're doing today, let's say with credit cards or other maybe loans that you've taken on can really impact you in the future. So um, checking your credit report and things like that. Um, 
But how, how do you build credit if you're paying off loans? And how do you invest if you, you know, you hardly have any money in your bank account? Sure. So um, investing is different than building credit. You don't have to invest to build credit. It's basically that you're borrowing money and paying it back. Okay. Right. So student loans are on your credit. So once you start paying that back, it's, you know, as long as you're making payments on time and in full, then you're developing good credit and it's on there. So any sort of account where you borrow money and you have to pay it back is is uh, recorded on your credit. And that doesn't necessarily mean that we recommend people get a credit card, but there are some safe, um, safe some things that you can do that are sort of lower risk to build credit. So there are things called a secured credit card, um, which is where you put a deposit down and then that becomes your limit that you can use on your credit card. So there's really no risk for um, the borrower and it is building your credit as you're using it like a normal credit card. We, um, if we can back up for just sure. a second, we've we've been talking about building credit and and getting a credit card and et cetera. Some students come in without really ever having thought about credit, what it like building credit. Can we back up for a second mm -hmm. and just let me ask you, what does that mean, building credit, getting credit? What's a credit score? If you guys want to talk. Sorry, they're the experts that's okay. in that area. No, that's okay. Um, <laughs> so basically, like I was saying, it's if you're borrowing money and paying it back, it's that record of what you've borrowed and your payments and all of that. So a credit card or a credit score is based on all of your accounts. So basically, all of the people, there are three credit reporting agencies that, re that report what your accounts look like. And so your credit score is based off of bunch of different things. Um, your history of repayment, um, how much debt you have taken on, how, what kinds of debt you've taken on, and oh, I'm drawing a blank. What else, Jamie? Um, how long, what the accounts are, um, right, your ratio you of debt to um, available income. credit. And you said, I heard you say you, you want to make sure you pay it back in full each sure. month. What does that mean? Sure. So with every sort of, if you're pay, making payments on a loan or a credit card, there's going to be a minimum payment that you have to pay. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're uh, paying at least that amount off, if not more, if possible. So okay. you want to make sure you're, you're paying it by the deadline and you're paying at least as much as they say you need to pay for your minimum payment. Um, and we just like to kind of comment or... Um, inform students that having good credit is important and it's not to say that they need to start stressing about credit immediately. They don't need to, you know, say, oh, I need to take out a credit card my freshman year because I need to build good credit. But we like to tell them, you know, like there are a lot of um, benefits to having good credit and making sure that you maintain good credit because that can really affect like your your borrowing opportunities in the future, what your interest rates will be. Um, even you know getting home loans you know later on when they're out of college perhaps and so it's important to maintain that so if you're coming to cal you know you just you just got a job you hardly have an income <laughs> what, what do you do? do you get a bank account first what 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 about students who've never had a bank account before well there are um different resources to compare different bank accounts mm -hmm. so um Different websites like NerdWallet have, um, they kind of compare different bank accounts and what they offer. So there are sort of the bigger financial institutions like Wells Fargo or Bank of America. Um, there are community banks that are more geared towards certain populations. Like I think there's a farming one mm -hmm. or mechanic one that students are probably not going to yeah. be, um, you know, uh, joining. And then there's um, online banks. And so if they want to do more online and they don't need that personal interaction, and then there's um, credit unions. And those are where the members, um, the people who are part of the bank are the members and the partial owners of the credit union. And they all offer different things. So it really depends on what you need. So the bigger banks are more um, for convenience in terms of having ATMs. Credit unions usually have sort of lower interest rate if you're going to borrow a loan from mm -hmm. them, eventually, things like that. So um, definitely, I would say do some research and figure out what's best for you. But definitely having a bank account is going to help you exponentially in managing your finances. So for a student who comes to Cal, bank account, they got a job, how many hours is it reasonable for a student to work? You mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. we're really here to get our diplomas and work towards that, how many, you know, 
I'd be working every day. So, I, you know, the general rule of thumb um, that we advise our students is no more than 10 to 15 hours a week. And again, the goal is that you're here, and your job is to be here as a student and complete your degree. Um, we also caution, especially our first year students, to give themselves some time to transition uh, before they start working. Um, so if it's that first semester, if it's the first year, how can you maybe balance some of those expenses in other ways and maybe not work while you're transitioning to Berkeley? Because this is a big place. Um, and so learning how to navigate um, the campus is, is really important. Yeah. Um, and just kind of going off of this and you know, that transition period, I actually came to Cal already having that work steady job. So I can really attest that there is a transition period. I had only ever worked over the summer before, so I didn't know what it was like to balance schoolwork and all of that, especially at a college, you know, first year at college, balancing that type of schoolwork and, and that kind of academia with working as well. And so I was a lot closer to that 10 than that 15 and I'm still a lot closer to the 10 just because especially if you're involved in Greek life or you know intramurals or any other clubs on campus it's it's a lot more realistic to look a little bit lower at least in the beginning just to give yourself some type of you know transition and wiggle room to get used to it. Um, we talked earlier about C3 and the segment on coping with guilt. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a significant number of students on our campus who uh, may be student parents, but maybe not. Maybe students feel a financial responsibility towards their family, much more so than uh, 10 or 15 hours would dictate. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. some students may feel like they really need to work almost full time to be able to finance not just their education and their own family, but those of a broader extended family or community mm -hmm. around them. Mm -hmm. what, are, what, are, uh, what are some resources for those students and uh, what is some advice for them? You know, I think it's a balance. Um, it's really important that, and when we partner with CE3, we hear this, um, it's really important for students to understand, especially around their financial aid, is the aid that we're providing is for their educational expenses. And if you're looking at a standard student budget, there's just enough aid there to cover that student budget. So any additional expenses or um, other people that they're trying to support can become a bit of a challenge. Um, I think that if students are thinking about working more and doing something outside of the standard 10 to 15 hours, is that the um, work with CE3 and work with their academic advisors, because that's typically where you're going to see that students will, um, the impact will be and there be a, could be a direct impact on their academic performance. And so um, does that mean then maybe you don't work as much during the academic year, but maybe during the breaks or over the summer, mm -hmm. you're working a lot more hours, saving a lot more money, mm -hmm. putting that aside mm -hmm. to help meet some of those obligations. And I can certainly understand that, but it's really important that students understand that aid is for the purpose of being here and trying to find other ways. But again, I think the academic advising is key if something if a student is going to make that kind of decision. Right. And it's important to also, I think, point out that uh, these kinds of resources are available to the right. students who don't necessarily need uh, to learn about credit or having a bank right. account. A lot of our students mm -hmm. come in already with bank mm -hmm. accounts and credit histories, um, particularly older students or, sure. or student parents, transfer students right. a lot of the time. And yet the financial tools that are available still apply. That's really interesting to know. We've come to the end of our session. Um, I want to thank you for being here, but let me give you one opportunity to say anything that you think might be important for students to know or remember about financial literacy. If there were one thing that you might say, please remember this, what might it be? Um, I think it would be to ask questions. Know that there are resources on this campus and I can almost guarantee you that if you have a question, so do 25 other students mm -hmm. in the same room with you probably have that same question. So you're not alone. Thank you. Jamie? Um, I would say that really, you know, focusing on that, your finances and what budgeting is. And a lot of students don't come in with that information. So asking questions about it and kind of learning how to do that because, you know, that's really important even when you're considering taking out loans and to know how much you really need versus how much they're offering you.
Yeah, I think a lot of students come in and, and like you said earlier, I don't really make that much money, so I'm not really going to bother with knowing how to manage my finances. So it's really important to learn those tools just so you have them and then you'll be successful in the future and then when you'll graduate, you'll know how to manage all of that money that you're making after you graduate from Cal. Thank you for your time. It's so wonderful to know that there are experts on our campus who are available to help our students. Silvia Marquez, Claudia Montesano, Jamie Stahl, thank you so much. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next show.